Hello. In this video, we're going to learn about two things and how they work and how they're different to each other. The first one of them is called a linear search, and the second one is called a binary search. So let's start off by talking about how a linear search works. So up the top in line one, and I've written this in Python, but you could do it in any language at all, are all the numbers in an array, and as you'll see, they are unordered. And what we're doing very simply is we're asking the user for a number and then we're going to go through in a for loop and we're going to check the first number and see if it matches and the second number and see if it matches and the third number and see if it matches. So we're going to go through everything in the list there and we're going to check it. And when we find a match, we're actually going to flip over the Boolean and we're going to say, hurrah, there's the number you're looking for. So before I talk you through how it works, I just want you to see it in action. So there we go, we run it. Now I'm going to look for a number that I don't think is in there, which is 11. And you'll see that it's checking against all of those numbers. So I'd actually had to do quite a lot of checking there. Now, what I'm going to do just for comparison is I'm going to go across and show you the binary search in action. Okay, so here we are in the binary search. Now, I have the same amount of numbers and I have them from 1 to 100 and there's 30 numbers in there. But, or these, whatever it is, there's the same number of numbers in there. I can't remember exactly what it is. Um, but we're going to use this different algorithm. And I want you to notice how much more quickly it can do it. So we'll run the program. Let's search for 11. And there you go. In only six guesses, it can tell me it isn't there. Now let's go for one that is there. Let's go for 49. And again, it told me in uh, six guesses that it in fact was there. So it is much more efficient. So let's have a look and see uh, how these things are actually constructed. But before I do that, let me just tell you that a linear search, which is the first one that we're looking at right now, that is the only one that will work with unsorted data. And this is unsorted. The binary search requires it to be sorted, and I'll explain why in a couple of minutes. So I've got my array here, and I've got all of my numbers there, and they are unsorted. I'm getting a variable for the length of the array and I know what I'm searching for because I'm getting the user to tell me and I'm casting that as an integer so that I can compare it to the numbers because you might remember that in Python it collects inputs as strings natively. So then I'm going to put found at false. So our default condition is we don't know if it's in there. And then we're going to count through and we're only going to keep counting if found it is still false. So, if the first number we're checking, so if that number 96 equals search for the number we're looking for, then it's going to tell us that it's in the list and it's going to change found it to be true. Now, that then won't keep running, or every time it runs through there, it won't do any more. It'll go through the motions of it, but won't actually do any more checking because we've already found it. You could probably break out of the program there too. That would work just as well. So um, we found it and now that's the end of the program. So let's just see that running. So something we know is in there, 90. There we go. And it found it. Now let's find out what, what happens when it's much further down the list. I see 16 is much further down the list. So if I try it with 16, you'll see it has to check all of those before it finally gets to 16. So what's happening is it's trying to get them to match and it doesn't. So it just tells us this number is not this number and it keeps going like that until it gets a match. Now, the last bit of the program, I'm just gonna try and, and luck on a number here that is not in the database. 66 was not found. So at the end of the program, I have just said, if found it is still false, then just tell me that number isn't found. So there's a little bit of extra stuff in here that doesn't have to be, but basically that's how a linear search works. Imagine we're just going through a pile of books. Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Uh, you know, very methodical, uh, very simple to do, but, um, but somewhat, um, but very time consuming. And when we talk about effectiveness in computing or efficiency, I beg your pardon, in computing, we are talking about doing things with as few iterations or steps as possible. Now, this one is a little bit harder to get your head around. So in this time, I want you to, to uh, remember that all of these numbers are in order. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get the lowest number, which I'm telling it is zero, 
and the highest number, which is the, as long as the array is. And we're going to run this function that's going to use the array, what we're searching for, which is x, and the low number and the high number. And so what it's going to do is it's going to keep doing this as long as the low is smaller than the high. And that might sound silly because they are very different at the moment, 0 and 100. But we're going to pick a midpoint between the biggest number and the smallest number. So I think there's 30 in this list. We're going to go to 15 and we are going to go and check the number in the 15th position. And if that number is higher than what we're looking for, then we're going to throw away that top half of the list. So imagine we picked it there and said 48. I don't know if that's in the middle or not. Probably is. And we said no, it, it's that's too high. So we wouldn't bother searching through the top half of the list. Now we're only going to search in the bottom half of the list. And so we then reduce our numbers so that our high and low are now only from the bottom to a new high. We're moving the goalposts, if you like. And then we're picking the number in the middle and saying, hey, is that it? And then we chop it again somewhere. Hey, is that it? Imagine if you were trying to guess a number out of 100 and you say, well, is it 50? Well, no, that's too high. Okay, is it 25? Well, no, that's too high. Is it 12? Well, that's too low. Okay, well, then it's between 12 and 25. So it's doing exactly that same thing. And when it finally runs out of luck, then it tells you that it's there. And if it gets all the way through and it's not there, then it'll tell you that too. So let's find something that we know isn't there. So 45 isn't there. And I actually think that this will discover that 45 is not there very quickly in terms of steps. There we go. It only had to check six numbers before it could find out that 45 was not in the list. So in terms of computational effort, it's very efficient. So the takeaway for this is the linear search, very good for things, well, really your only option when things are unsorted. Binary search, much, much more efficient. Binary is much more efficient, but stuff does need to be sorted in order for it to work. And so you're getting a much greater efficiency. If you're searching a million records, then you would get an order of magnitude efficiency out of a binary search that you would not get out of unsorted data if you had to check a million different records. So I hope that's clearer. If not, maybe watch this again. But I've struggled to understand this and now I feel like I've finally got it.